Hello, Jesse Good here, and today we're taking a look at the LEGO Creator Expert Modular Building Bookshop. This has 2,504 pieces, five minifigures, and retails for $180 in the United States. I'm going to show off some interesting accessories with this first minifigure, the first of which is this Moby Brick Book. Nice pun on Moby Dick. And the design here is a printed cover, and this uses the newer book design. Oddly enough, the only new book design in this set. The rest are either tiles or bricks. Inside, there's a 1x2 print that says Once Upon a Time. This does appear once more in this set. No printing on the back of the book. And there's also this little flower or plant, which is using that newer one that appeared in the CMF of a plant top, and then this older flower piece going into the hole in the middle of that plant piece. Accessories removed, he has a rare torso print that appeared in the Fun Fair People Pack, but not too many other sets. And he does have an alternate expression where he looks pretty darn happy. This next minifigure I really like because she has a new color for an existing hair piece that was used in series 17, but in an orange coloring. So here it's in a black hair coloring, which works really well. And I can see a lot of use out of that. Face print is becoming more and more common where it does have the sleepy face at the alternate side. Still remember when that was only in a junior set from 2015. And she does have a really nice torso printing as well. This next minifigure has a flannel that's becoming more and more common, a pretty old face print that Mutt Williams hair in gray, I can't believe I still call it that. At the back, more torso printing, no alternate facial expression, and my mom says this looks like a guy from this old house, I don't really see it though. The next minifigure also has some nice newish prints on the face and torso, and there's some back printing on the torso, as well as an alternate facial expression where she looks a little bit more sincere, I guess. And lastly, there's a kid minifigure, which I like the brick-built plane he has, where they use new pieces like the hat propeller, as well as just a very simple look for such a minifigure scale build. I'm really impressed with the nice part usage there. The minifigure also uses the fairly new scarf piece, a nice cap at the top, as well as a torso print I really like, which previously appeared in last year's Hidden Side Train. Also for his face print, he has a happy expression, and then a more shocked look. Maybe he just lost his little plane. For those new to modular buildings, there's a release cycle they have where they release a set with more than two buildings, then a set with a single building, and a set that's a corner building. This is the one with multiple buildings, last one being assembly square. And how this works is right down the middle. You can split these very easily. And these are both attached to the 16 by 32 base plates and they have their own separate builds. So you could display them independently and even put them on the bookends of other modulars, which don't worry, we'll be showing that on my modular shelf in a little bit. And then each of these split into separate sections. More specifically, each building splits into four sections. This apartment right here has an easy to remove front section of the second floor, and also this back section of the second floor. The same is with the bookstore, which has a front section of the second floor that can be removed, and then a back section. And while the bookstore is separated into three floors with the second floor that can remove as well, the apartment only has a ground floor, but it has a crawl space, which the bookshop does not have. And the crawl space itself is pretty compact. I can't even call it a basement because you can't have a minifigure standing up in that area. Either way, they're both back together. And let's take a look at the Birch Bookstore first. The Birch Bookstore uses a predominantly medium nougat coloring and dark red to make a very warm feeling set. This is something that looks like it's straight out of autumn, not only aided by this tree at the front, which is one of my favorite builds in a modular building that isn't part of the building itself. And this design kind of fits the book aesthetic. So I really like the thought of making this color scheme match the idea of the set. And once again, I love this tree build where they shift from using Technic pieces to these horn pieces or teeth pieces, whatever you want to look at them as, ending up with these different colored branches, again, giving the fall feel. And it's just interesting seeing Technic pieces used for a nature build, but it works so well here. You just got to make sure that you make these tubes face the back so that they don't have this line showing. And one thing I don't like about the use of Technic pieces, though, is these two parts, which are the dual... I guess uh, pin pieces, again, I'm not super versed in the world of Technic, but they are black and you can kind of see them bleeding through as well as the holes that they have through the back of this front tree branch. It doesn't work too well. I kind of wish those were colored in white. 
Now this part just attaches to a little potted area or fenced off area, which does have two holes for Technic pins there. And at the top, we have the branches that have this plain part, the design that the minifigure was holding that could just rest on this branch to the left. And then over here is one of my favorite builds of the set. It's a Blue Jay's nest. It's not totally original. I've seen them use that fur neck attachment as something for an animal nest, but it is also really nice getting this new bird piece in a blue coloring, which was just introduced last year. To the right here, it's also nice getting this plant top piece in a new color as well, where I haven't seen it in olive. And I love how Lego is making the branch piece more and more common in this orange coloring. And we see more instances of the leaves in orange, as well as that new yellow for them. Pardon my role play, but Lego allows for a lot of different positions that you can put the mini figures at the front, where they have studs on one by two jumpers and also studs on one by four plates. And the studs that you don't want to put mini figures on, well, you could just hide them up with these fallen leaf pieces, adding more to the autumn aesthetic. Really like getting them in orange again, and getting them in yellow is even more rare where that's a new color for the piece in 2020. At the front here, there's a used book cart, and this brings up one of my first problems with the set. It's not too big of a problem, but it's something that annoys me. And there's a heavy usage of unprinted tiles for books. This works when it's something like a shelf book build where you're not really supposed to see the covers of the books. So when they use it here, where they use a studs not on top technique, even blending in some bricks, it works pretty well. But when you have it as the top book cover on a stack of books here, it just looks like a two by two unprinted tile and it doesn't really work as a book. They have that specialized book piece, which they use with the minifigure we took a look at earlier. In my opinion, that works a lot more for books at the top of the stack, or you could have this as a two by two print and it would look more like a book than it does now. But that's just my two cents. To the left here, they have a one by two printed tile that was introduced in the Disney Castle set. Other than that though, there's not too much going on where we're just gonna put this back in the corner. And there's more printed tiles with a 2x4 on this side and a 2x4 on this side, both exclusive to the set. I could see the one with the books text being a lot more used in different mocks, where you could use that for your own bookstore. And to the right there and to the left there, they have 1x1 one one gold tiles. These aren't the pearl gold ones, but the ones that look almost like a chrome, so I really like that. Also, they use the lantern piece as a very nice centerpiece to this archway here. And this archway is really well built where they mix two different types of tiles where they have the one by one square tile and the one by one tile with a flat bottom and round top or round top and flat bottom. How they attach that in such an interesting angle is by using these one by two circular plates. And those work pretty well, except sometimes the stressing there makes something like the one to the end here not align perfectly. So I keep pushing that back but it's becoming more and more hard to line it up. So I just gotta reposition it there. But again, just naturally over time, it's gonna go back into place. Other than that, I like the floor design on the entryway of the Birch Bookstore, as well as the use of two glass panels for the windows and the glass door to enter the bookstore. Taking a peek inside the Birch Bookstore, it's easy to get a better look by removing this top flight of stairs that has a little miniature shelf there where it just attaches to four studs in total. And this back area is a checkout section, which the design does use another unprinted one by two book. Eh, a little bit annoying, but what's even more odd is that there's no one by two $100 bill piece here. It's not anything rare, but I'm not sure why they don't have that when they have a whole cash register system. There is a two by two uh, jumper there if you wanna fit a minifigure standing behind the cash register. And to the corner over here, there's a bookshelf, which I actually like the spines being used as these gold bar pieces. That works maybe even better than just a regular one by two there. Don't mind the lack of printing on the spines because that I kind of understand. The front of the books though, not having printing is a little bit annoying. And to this little bookshelf right here, there's more designs of some unprinted spines and I like the studs not on top technique building there. And getting a better look at the staircase, I like the technique of using these one by three tiles and then this uh, one by one, again, circular bottom flat top tile to kind of make for a pretty interesting looking staircase. And it's a bit hard to see, but there is a very small space to stand in under the staircase, but there's nothing inside the area. Though know, right under staircase, there is a doorway that leads to the back of the building, which unfortunately the back of the building does not have any details to it. There's also these window builds up here, which use a total of four panels each. You could open those up individually. The front of the second floor has a really nice four window design that matches the other modulars at the front. Top with this half circle design as well. 
And you can enter the interior from the stairwell of the first floor right underneath this staircase. This design of this loft build does have a lot of nice details to it. I love this lazy boy type chair, which is a reclining back and that can be positioned. And also a lot of the use of these flat bottom round top brick pieces, which are the newer one by ones. Those are different from the tiles we pointed out earlier. In the corner, there's a lamp as well as this nice clock here. And we're getting more and more grandfather clocks, but this one's actually secured. I forgot about that. I thought it was on like a one by two jumper or something like that. This does use a nice printed clock face there. And I like the use of a stud for the little pendulum. There's also a cup on this table there, but not too much else going on. Oh, a little rug as well. If you wanna enter the back way, there's a door here where we have two seats and a little table also with a cup. And while attached to the ground floor, that acts as a balcony in a way. And the top floor coincides with the roof. I like the use of the dark red here. And as shown earlier, you can get an interior look at the roof by removing this back part. But first I wanted to appreciate the exterior where they use a lot of macaroni tile pieces. They get this really nice shaping outlining a very elegant look as well as six of these windows to give it a nice almost sky view design. Enter to the interior of the last floor by this right side here, which is where the second floor staircase leads. And there's a bright bluish green bed. I love the sheet coloring in bright bluish green because that's one of my favorite Lego colors. And it's on a black frame, which my bed is a black frame. So, oh my gosh, that's kind of my aesthetic. Love the use of the microphone pieces for the bed frame as well. It's just some nice part usage. To the left here, they do have the chameleon tank, which inside, that's the first time we're getting that newer piece from series 19 of the chameleon in a bright bluish green what i don't like though is that the build here doesn't have a back side so in a way can't the chameleon just kind of escape through the back here it's something that I didn't think through but it's not too big of a deal either way let's put this back part back onto the third floor and put the top floor back on the building and that is it for the build of this birch bookstore Two more things I wanted to point out that I'm just noticing now that I've reattached it is that there's more nice part usage of the microphone pieces at the outside here, as well as these nice part usage of the skeleton legs for railing at the top. This is actually a build that was from the Lego Green Grocer set for railing at the top. So I kind of like that since Green Grocer was my first modular building. But that is it, and let's take a look at the next building. Next is a company townhouse or apartment build, and this design uses a lot of bright bluish green. The only problem with using that color so much is that there's a lot of other colors that bleed through when they have to use a more specialized piece. For example, this modified one by two with the Technic axle hole in the middle. They had to use like a sand green. There's some plates that have to be some different colors. And if you look at it from the side, it does bleed through a lot. Of course, when you attach these to other modular buildings, you could cover those up easily. And this is a problem that's definitely more prominent here than on the bookstore build. The color scheme of this building gives off more of a spring feel with the nice bright bluish green and some green plants at the bottom. And that's kind of a cool transition from going to the left building being this fall design transitioning into spring. There's only one space to really fit the minifigure standing around connected to a stud at this front on that two by two jumper. Would have been cool to get more, but I guess they wouldn't have a way to really cover them up. And then we have this nice walkway entering into the building. I like the use of these curved pieces that attach via a peg and how they clip on to some of these clip pieces. It all makes for a pretty interesting build. And you can get a better look at that from looking to the side. And at the top here, there's one of those new triangular tile pieces, which has a printed 107, also exclusive to this set. I also like the little build for these lights to the right and left of the door where they do use these new triangular top pieces and a clear coloring. I think the first floor interior of the townhouse is even better than the first floor interior of the bookstore, where right when you enter, there is a carpet and that uses some pizza slice pieces as well as macaroni tile pieces, as well as this coat rack here, if you wanna look at it that way, which has an umbrella holder using the microphone pieces once again in a very clever way where it just kind of hooks on to the middle of those two very well. Also, this fedora is being held by some studs Nice little tea table, which has a printed two by two of the newer style of that newspaper. Teapot as well, plotted plant. Underneath the staircase, there's actually a doorway that leads to a room, which is the crawl space. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. The adjacent wall has a very nice fireplace build, which is quite simple, but has a design that I haven't seen in other Lego fireplaces, using these one by two grill pieces to add to the detailing. To the right there, there's a two by two print of that sailboat picture. That's something that has appeared since I 
think, 2011. And then to the left here, there's a cupboard, which the cupboard has some spices and things inside. And that's very easy to close where it uses some window panel pieces. And then to the right, there's this nice bench, which I like the orange coloring there and how that's in the Bayview window. And I almost forgot to appreciate the exterior of the Bayview window. And this design does use a nice blue for the window frame pieces, as well as the candlestick pieces all lined up to give it a cylinder look separating each of the windows. But in my opinion, this building has a better backside with a nice plant plot where we do have the pumpkin piece, as well as these plant tops and a little bit of a stairway, which also has a door to the left of it that leads into the crawl space. It's time we take a look at that. Again, it's fairly easy for us to access the crawl space and many figures could get there from that one door under the staircase, as well as that back part that we just showed. There is a ladder and that ladder can finally give us the plane in the tree. Either use those studs to attach the ladder, which does have some clips at the bottom, or plop it right underneath the branch with the plane and stand a minifigure at the top and they could reach for the plane. And there's also this mouse trap as well as a sack of maybe something valuable, a little clipper too. Hmm, maybe these coincide with that whole detective's office lore, who knows? And there's only one more floor, which is the second floor. This design does have part of the roof there. And like I showed earlier, there's actually two separate parts to it that just connect via the studs right underneath. This design does have a bedroom, which you can see this two by two print from the Big Bang Theory set to the right as well as a really nice little build for a potted plant and a lamp. I like how they used a mini figure head in that gold coloring to kind of make a round shape at the bottom. Also very nice dresser build using one by two jumpers as well as some sloped pieces and a very elegant queen size bed if I'm not mistaken. I don't like the color as much as the one in the Birch Bookstore, but it still works pretty well here. And I like the design they use uh, making uh, the one by one pizza slice corner pieces to give it more of a design for the bed frame. Also using these pyramid pieces as well. There's some windows at the back too. And this leads us to the exterior where I really like the use of these pizza slice corner pieces to give a very roof-like texture to well, the roof of this build. I also like the use of these newer one by ones which almost give a roof feel of their own in white and how they corner that to give a more elegant European look. There's not too much else to add here, but you could see where this part connected with the 107 print. And as for that separate section at the back, there's just a door that leads to this balcony area, also some windows and some nice plants there with a pretty cool railing build. Reattach it and you can see how nice of a balcony that back section makes. And finally, the roof doesn't have too much detail into it beyond these little chimney parts to the right. But that's it for the builds of the set. Let's take a look at how this looks against some of my modulars. They're bright bluish green matches in a way, and they have very vibrant and packed designs, going more modern than some of those older ones. And honestly, I think the bookstore would match really well connected to the corner garage where they have that similar nougat coloring, as with the townhouse connecting more towards the diner as they have that similar bright bluish green coloring. The preceding era started with the Parisian and ended with the assembly square and the Parisian and this one do go along pretty well because the Parisian was really when Lego started to go with the more modern design using a lot more smooth pieces, less studs exposed and new elements introduced throughout the 2000s and 10s. As for a first era building, which the first era started with Market Street and Cafe Corner and ended with the Palace Cinema, I have Green Grocer. I know it's missing a lot of pieces, I gotta spruce it up. And it looks fine next to this one, but those are more blocky and simpler in their exterior. This one's more concise with a lot of newer pieces. So it's not the perfect combination. I would definitely display this more with the modern modulars. But that's it for the build of the set. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. The box uses that typical under $200 modular box size. And the back shows some features as well as the other modulars that released fairly recently. Come on, they didn't show this connected to the corner garage. I really wanted to see that. And there's two instruction booklets, which is perfect because it's one for each building. So this is basically one you could split with somebody. And at the end, this one has an ad for the corner garage. So overall, the Modular Bookshop is one of my favorite Modular buildings. That's an easy thing to say, but to explain it, well, let me put it in my own words and why I like it so much. I like when LEGO does the Modular buildings under $200 because it feels like they're more personal and they take more time to make each building stand on their own instead of focusing so much on size. 
I feel like something like that's lost in the assembly square or in the corner garage. But for the bookshop, it's a very fresh idea, not only in that we don't get a lot of Lego bookshops, but how they tie in the season of fall, not only to the nature design at the front, but to the whole color scheme and to the feel of reading a book on a nice autumn evening. To the right, that a townhouse has a more vibrant spring look and we have more vibrant plant life on the exterior and it has more of a sense of new life, new family, a new journey. That's what I feel. And maybe I'm just talking out of my butt here and describing all these, but that's why I love this set so much. It has so much meaning. It has so much purpose when I look at it. It's not just something that they didn't think too much on putting together. They thought out so many details here, so many little details to add to make such a great set. I do have those minor nitpicks when I was pointing out all throughout the builds of the set, so I can't give this an A+. But as a whole, I'd give this an A. And again, it's one of my favorite modular buildings. And I think you get an amazing value here, an amazing parts pack if you're looking at it from those perspectives. But most importantly, you get an amazing build that's so creative and has so much passion put into it. So that's it for my thoughts on this modular building. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.